All right, welcome back everyone to another exciting episode of Fat Guys Fasting. We are your hosts. I'm Andy. And I'm Corey. All right, and as usual, uh, anything that we say in this video is purely for entertainment purposes only and not to be construed for medical advice. Please, please consult your doctor before starting any kind of diet or exercise program. And with that, Corey, let's talk about our updates. This is this is episode number three. Can you believe that? We've been doing this for about a week now. I know. It's been awesome. Uh, knowing that I'm going to be coming on air and sharing my progress and hold, having the audience and you hold me accountable has really helped drive me forward and make sure that I'm staying on track with what I need to do. So I'm excited, man. Like, I'm, I'm feeling good and, uh, you know, just just living the dream. How about you? Absolutely. It's been a great week. I, this has been a, an awesome experience. I'm glad to be here with you. It definitely helps to keep me on track and keep me going. So I, I did a 20 hour fast today. I know last episode I said I was going to, you know, eat Sunday night and then not eat again until Wednesday. Didn't quite make that. My wife made a delicious dinner of cabbage rolls and there's some rice in the cabbage rolls, but it was one of my favorites. And so I had to partake. <laughs> so I only made it 20 hours, but, uh, you know, that's okay. I, I think I'm, I'm still, I'm still good at 20 hour fast. I'm still proud of that. So for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I, Hey, you know what? I actually, I weighed myself this morning and I'm down another pound. So I, I'll there take it. Go. I'm not going to weigh again until Friday. So I'm just doing Friday weigh-ins, kind of just check where I am at the week. I don't want to get discouraged if I like fast an entire day and be like, wait a second, what? <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, I'm still on the same same path, uh, not eating till Wednesday. Um, and, you know, did have an interesting story today, though, because there were some serious challenges I faced. Um, you know, we live way out in the country and I had to go run some errands. And so it was like 20 minutes. 30 minutes in the car driving there driving back and i'm telling you i passed every single fast food restaurant known to man on the way there so i went by mcdonald's hardy sonic wendy's burger king checkers i mean everything right taco bell and everywhere i was like oh i could eat i could eat i could eat i could get this i could get this you know and i'm hungry and my stomach's going do it do it do it do it and uh but i didn't i just went to the store and then, I mean, I even was kind of plotting sometimes. I was like, oh, maybe on the way back, I could just run through and, you know, no one will ever know. No one would know. <laughs> right. And I was like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. You'll know. And you, you know, you can't do that to yourself. So I was really proud of myself. You know, drove through all that. I know it might seem like a little bit for some people, but man, that, that, was, that was a huge thing for me. So I made it all the way home. Made it to, you know, back to Julie, kind of dropped everything off and said, oh, I told her this story. You know, I drove by all these restaurants and I wanted to get this. So but she's like, you can do it in just two more days. We'll eat, which was like not helping. <laughs> but, you know, I was like, OK, <laughs> fine. So, you know, calm myself down. Well, later, you know, a few hours later, I had to go pick my mom up from the train station. She was coming uh, back down. She went to go visit some family. And my dad rode with me and we get in the car and he tells me, uh, on the way home, we're going to go through a drive through and grab some burgers. And I'm like, oh, gosh, didn't are you give for... you a choice, huh? No. I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh. So now not only do I got to drive by them, I got to drive through them and listen to my mom ordering McDoubles and my dad ordering double cheeseburgers. And I'm thinking, this oh, is like man. watching your ex-girlfriend go date another guy. <laughs> you know, it's just like that McDouble coming. Like, I literally grabbed the bag and like handed it off to somebody else. I'm like, oh, mm. <laughs> but I didn't do it. I stayed strong. I stayed strong. Yeah, good job. So heck yeah, it was it was good. Hey, before we move on to our our first topic of the day, though, do us a huge favor: smash that like button. It really does help get these videos out to more yeah. people. Helps let us know that we're doing a good job. That you want to hear more of our fasting talks and more of our updates. And we do just really appreciate you guys, you know, your feedback. Thank you very much. It's the biggest compliment we get. Absolutely. All right. So Corey, moving on then, let, uh, how is it that you handle these, uh, these hunger issues that come up then like this, that, that you had to deal with today? The hunger games. Yeah. The hunger uh, games, the hunger games, the hunger pain of the hunger games. Uh, <laughs> you know, Honestly, so is to me there's kind of two parts to it. So first off, there's what we can do physically to actually satiate our body and kind of quiet that that stomach that's just saying feed me, feed me, feed me. But then there's also the mental game 
right? Which is kind of why it is the Hunger Games, right? There's a big mental component to this as well. So let's start off by talking just like physically what you can physically do. So um, for me, like honestly, increasing your water intake is huge. Uh, I've fasted before and I've always had this rule for myself. And it was, you know, if you're hungry and you really are considering eating, do this, drink some water, drink at least eight ounces, drink a full glass of water, wait for 30 minutes. And if you're still hungry, then maybe reevaluate and say, hey, do I need to break my fast or something like that? So I've kind of practiced that. And what I notice is almost always when I drink water, the hunger pains go away. So I just, I'm satiated, I'm fine. And I think it was my body telling me I'm thirsty. Um, Mm. When you're fasting, right, you know, when you think about it, we get a lot of our water intake through foods that we eat and we have cut that out. So you need to supplement it with more water. You need to be drinking a lot of water. Sure. Right. What about you? Well, and I, I don't know what, when you were talking about it. I don't know if you've noticed this, but when I start to fast or when I go on keto, those first few days, I am running to the bathroom and I am peeing like a racehorse. And it's just like every 20 minutes I'm having to pee. Have you noticed that too? Uh, that's been my life for the last eight years. I'm being a diabetic. That's been, I mean, that's another sign that my diabetes has been bad, but yeah, it's exceptionally bad when you start, uh, fasting. I think, you know, your body's just kind of purging junk. Sure. I mean, that's true. I hadn't even thought about diabetes, but yeah. So when you start fasting, when you go on keto, you, uh, your body is losing all of that water because your inflammation is going down, right? Your, your organs, your muscles, your nerves, all those things are losing that water and uh, you're peeing it all out. Along with the water, though, is coming out electrolytes, you know, your salts in your body. And your body needs those salts to uh, to feel, to work properly, right? If you don't have those salts in your body, then mm-hmm. your muscles aren't going to work right. You're going to get cramps. The nerves aren't going to work right. You're going to kind of twitch every so often. You get that restless leg at night. And, uh, you know, you need to have the drink plenty of water. That's part of, you know, satisfying that hunger. And then and drinking more electrolytes, more of the, the salts in your water that that helps um, to get your body. Have you experienced keto flu? Do you know what keto flu is? Are you familiar with that? Yeah. I mean, we've we've been doing keto for a while. And I know when we first started, uh, that was certainly something that we ran into, like just kind of feeling like garbage. Right. So yeah, that keto flu, that is your body telling you, Hey, I'm missing nutrients. And in this case, it's salt, right? These mm-hmm. electrolytes. So my wife actually got a good recipe for, uh, it's called Keterade is what we call it. Keterade. But it's love it. Yeah, ke- <laughs> right. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, sodium chloride, so regular table salt, mm-hmm. potassium chloride, which is under the name brand of new salt, right? Okay. Um, and, and where does one find new salt? New salt is at the grocery store. Okay. And typically that's for diabetics, actually. You would use new salt because you, as diabetic, you don't want to have too much salt in your diet. So you buy the new salt. It's technically not salt. It's potassium chloride instead of sodium chloride. Anyway, but your body also needs potassium. As you're peeing all that out, you need the potassium too. And then you put in... Uh, lemon juice, so either a fresh mm-hmm. squeeze with lemon or, you know, the plastic lemons that you can get in the grocery store. Um, and then um, apple cider vinegar, uh, water, either sparkling or clear, and some ice and some stevia drops to kind of sweeten it up. And maybe a couple of drops of lemon um, essential oils if you've got it. Um, but you kind of mix all that together and then, you know, the, the lemon kind of adds some calories and there's, you know, it's kind of open for, yeah, (laughs) right. Yeah. But lemon's better than oranges, you know, citrus, citrus is tends to be a little low calorie, but yeah, I guess maybe technically it would be breaking your fast. But I think if the choice is between, you know, a regular Gatorade, you you need these salts, right? Yeah. you, you, You need the salt. So it's either a regular Gatorade or you know, this one with, uh, you know, just a squeeze of lemon for the only calories. I think it's probably better to, to have the Keterade, right? Yeah, I would imagine. Uh, you know, Julie gave me, I was drinking water and have a lot of hunger pains and something like that. And so she actually gave me this, right? I don't know if you've seen these before, uh, but this is uh, electrolyte powder by Dr. Berg, right? And so we're not sponsored by Dr. Berg. Um, hashtag but, not a sponsor <laughs> hashtag yeah but but can de- totally vouch for it i mean this made me feel fantastic uh just putting a couple of 
scoops in there or whatever it was one scoop she made it for me she doc, yeah. she, she babies me what so, flavor is that this is uh pomegranate and cherry highly recommended yeah. loved it um so i'll need to not take it all the time <laughs> but right uh but yeah it was great you know and it actually really really did do a great job suppressing the hunger as well yeah so. well and you know what i found even sometimes just just putting a little bit of salt in uh some warm water that can uh help with that just take it like a shot glass i know it sounds disgusting <laughs> no it's yeah it's horrible why i mean why <laughs> right well you know just it's because you need the salts right and that does kind of yeah. cure that hunger pain if you're really feeling that hunger and you just need something taking a shot of salt water i remember mm. reading somewhere that uh if you just if you're fasting every time you take a drink of water just takes a little bit of salt with it uh, it will kind of help with the uh the hunger pains and with mm. the uh the electrolyte imbalance, but I don't know. I guess your mileage may vary. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Now, a big thing for me too is coffee, right? So I'll drink mm. coffee a lot. And in the morning, I'm making a pot of coffee and I'm sitting in here drinking coffee, coffee, coffee. Um, and I think the caffeine helps. I want to read up on it more, but I do believe caffeine it helps to suppress an appetite, you know? So sure, uh, it's a stimulant. So it, it should, right? I would imagine. I don't know. Right. Uh, but yeah, I think that's helped me a lot. Just drinking the coffee and making sure that I have that readily, readily available. (laughs) Um, and then at night, the only thing I have to be careful of is my nighttime coffee, my morning coffee, I just drink black. So there's no calories. It doesn't break a fast. You're good to go. But my nighttime coffee, I like to put some heavy cream in it, turn it into whipping cream, flavor that up, put a little uh, stevia in it, and uh, that definitely will break your fast. So I only get to <laughs> indulge in that on the days we eat. Gotcha, so gotcha. It's a special treat. So now, I mean, I don't drink coffee because of religious reasons, but um, and, and I just don't like the the flavor of it, the, the taste or the, uh, the smell. I just, uh, coffee's not for me. But... Uh, I've heard of bulletproof coffee. Is that something you can drink while you're fasting or is that a no-no while you're fasting? I would say that would definitely break your fast. Uh, we've done that before. So we've made it with MCT oil and cocoa powder and st- I think stevia or maybe some other type of sweetener that Julie used. But uh, And then we put it in the freezer and then when you made your coffee, you just dropped it in there. So it was it was great. It tasted great. Um, and it was almost like a meal replacement, to be honest with you. I think there's like over 100 calories. And it's kind of like a fat bomb, really, when you think about it. Okay, so now wait. So you mixed, you mixed hot cocoa. I'm sorry, not hot cocoa. Regular cocoa powder, unsweetened mm-hmm. cocoa powder. Right. With MCT oil mm-hmm. and, and stevia. Yes. Is that it? I and will. Then you, and you... And I'll need, to, we'll need a, to put in the uh, description what the actual thing is because Julie made them. So that's I, good. And you know what we should do, what we need to do is we need to put these recipes up on our website. We which should. Is yeah. www.fatguysfasting.com. <laughs> yeah. Fatguysfasting.com. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> website up. And I think we're going to put, you know, we're going to have a frequently asked questions about uh, fasting and we're going to have the recipe and we have a blog going. So, you know, come on out there, sign up for our newsletter, right? We, yeah. would, we would love to be able to keep in touch with you and send you all of our latest greatest when we uh, come out with it. So absolutely. Fantastic. Um, cool. So now wait. Okay. Yeah. You said though, that's only on your eating days. Bulletproof coffee is not during fasting, right? Right. Yeah. Would not do that during fasting. Got it. So, all now, right, but we coffee and tea black is okay. Coffee and tea black, unsweetened, yeah. You're good you're Got good it. to go. Yeah, good to go. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. What were you going to say? Likewise, I'm doing the same, right? We're just both <laughs> excited. I was going to say, you know, as far as that that's like the taking it in, but I think the bigger issue is that psychological game. Right? Um sure. and so how do you like kind of this today, right? It wasn't necessarily that I needed to put something in my stomach to quelch the hunger it was that i literally was like driving by some of my favorite junk foods ever you know like oh my gosh i could get mcdoubles i could go get a you know spicy chicken sandwich i could go get this you know and and when when i'm i'm all or nothing right (laughs) so so usually it would be like three stops to be like oh yeah well i'll get a whopper and then i'll go to mcdonald's and get this and i'll go to wendy's and get that you know so it's like craziness but um, sure well, so what I think is probably the best is staying busy. I mean, I know you are an incredibly busy guy. You got, like you said, you got three businesses that you're running, and 
uh, I'm not nearly as busy as you are, but I, I find that, you know, playing video games, this is kind of my fortress of solitude here, sure, my, yeah. uh, my control center. Mm-hmm. But as long as I, I, if, if there's something cooking downstairs and I can just smell it and it's the temptation is there, mm-hmm. I, I come up here to my, my fortress of solitude, my, my command center and play some games and, uh, attack the, uh, the, uh, Zerg armies, then I, I'm doing all right. You know, I can usually avoid, uh, all of that, you know, another big thing too, you know, I said, I I'm stopping eating at seven o'clock. Mm-hmm. I find if I come upstairs and just avoid the kitchen altogether after oh, yeah. seven, then I'm good. If I come upstairs and I just am not anywhere near it, I don't watch TV downstairs after seven. I uh, just don't go downstairs and I can stay away from it and I'm, I'm not tempted. No, oh, yeah. So avoidance is the one that works for me the most, I think. And environment's a big part of it. I think you, you hit on that when you said you kind of get up away from the kitchen, you know. Right. And yeah, staying busy. I you know, idle minds, you kind of just focus on it and think about it and you're like, Oh, I'm pretty hungry, you know. So I I think that's part of it. The the one thing for me, and this is where we we're different, right? Uh I've got it made. Like, this mm. is like, this is kind of a cakewalk. If I don't succeed at this, I'm just weak. That's the, the reason <laughs> I failed, you know? It's just weak sauce, you know? How, how so? What do you mean you got it made? What, what's going on? So we, you know, like, we, Julie and I both fast, right? So it's, a, mm-hmm. it's just the two of us in the household. We both fast. Our kids are already out, and they're kind of doing their thing. And so uh, we don't have to worry about cooking for them, Um you know, like I work from home. I don't have to go to the office and, uh, you know, like be around other people. They're like, hey, let's go to lunch. You know, be like, yeah, I'll have a water. No, mm. I mean, like we can we completely control our environment and everything and we're on it together. So, you know, I have it easy. Now, you right. You got to be your wife cooking. You got kids. You can mm-hmm. you get out of the house to do some jobby type things. Right. I think you freelance <laughs> a little bit, but, uh, right. you know, get out and you're kind of more face to face with people and stuff like that. So I'd imagine that's a much bigger challenge, right? Sure. Well, and I remember as a teacher, you know, people would, we'd have a rough week and people would bring in donuts or cookies or, or mm-hmm. something and be like, and they, it would be a kindness as, Oh, I know you've had such a rough week. Here, have a cookie. It just was. It was so hard to to right. say. It was. It was rude, right? To say, "Oh no, thank you. I don't want a cookie. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm 500 pounds." Right? Mm-hmm. It's. It was. It's very, very hard for me, especially because I feel like I'm a nice guy, and so it was hard. Uh, to to take one for the team <laughs> to not take one for the team and take that cookie and make that other person feel good for for providing that service for me but uh you know it's food is just a social thing you know it really has become just i mean i guess food has always been a social event sure, yeah. but uh uh it's it's the time for us to come together as a family and it it's it's difficult when you are cutting all food out to say, oh no, thank you. Um, I'll, I'm just here for the conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of awkward. But I, I think as long as you communicate with your family um, and let them know what you're trying to do, and you get them on board with your goals, I think that is probably the best way for them. And you know, as long as they're supportive and supporting you in what you're trying to do, mm-hmm. I think that that goes a long way. Yeah, for sure. And I think you know, you just having that conversation. You know, like, hey, this right. is what I'm trying to do. And um, they'll, they'll get behind you, you know. So yeah. it's a, but I do think, I really do think the mental game is harder than the physical game. Sure. Absolutely. Like it just is. That's, that's the way it is. So, you know, yeah. so we talked a little bit about how um, somebody told me f- f- uh, hunger is just a feeling, right? Mm-hmm. So have you ever had like a, a paper cut and then you go to type on the computer and uh, it just, it bothers you. It hurts. Uh, uh, you just... No, I can't say I have, I've gotten a split on the lip and had to play the saxophone and that hurts and ah. you got to keep at it. <laughs> sure. Okay. So you, you keep on playing, right? Yeah. You have Even to. though you've got that split on the lip, right? That's right. So fasting, I feel is the same way. Like it, it hunger is just a feeling and it's, it's kind of an annoyance like that split mm-hmm. on the lip you just move on, right? So, I mean, I guess I guess you can't really put a Band-Aid on your lip, but if you had a cut on your finger and you're trying to type and you really have to do that, you can put a Band-Aid around it, just like drinking water, drinking electrolytes, those kinds of things can kind of help ease that pain, but it's just always going to be there. It's annoying. 
it sucks, but after a few days, you don't even notice it anymore. Fasting, I feel, is very similar, right? With fasting, like I found that after the first couple of days, it gets a lot easier. You're just not hungry anymore, at least as hungry. Right. And I actually found, you know, I kind of started getting prideful or, or, you know, some hubris. I found that I was being, you know, I was proud of myself for, Mm -hmm. you know, fasting as long as I had and for avoiding that temptation. And so I kind of looked at other people that were, you know, shoveling food in their face. And I thought, oh, gosh, you know, I I'm so glad I don't have to. I'm not a slave to the food anymore. I've, I've overcome that craving. Right. Of, of course, here I am back and I'm, I'm a slave again to the cravings. But, you know, it, uh, over time, it, it gets easier and easier, just like that cut as it heals. You know, mm-hmm. you just don't feel it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, but it's a process and it's a journey and you're going to get there. And at some point you'll, you know, be able to come out on the other side and you'll not have those cravings and you'll be healthy and on the right track and moving in the right direction. So, you know, you're doing everything you need to do at this point. I always believe we're uh, we are right where we're supposed to be, you know, when we're supposed to be there. So it's just kind of like destiny. So I'm thinking next time. Right. We really need to. And I, we've teased it a little bit, but we're here. I went, you know, today and I just wanted to make sure I had the the new. Oh, yeah. Nice. So this here by Dr. Jason Fung. We want to I want to go through this, man. Um, yeah. You have a copy on Kindle or something, right? I have a copy. I think I lent it to somebody and they never give it back to me. So I, <laughs> I might have to go out and get my own copy, too. Yeah, so I think we go through that. There's that's just pure gold. And then I also took the liberty of picking up this one as well, uh, the Diabetes Code. I've read them both before. Like you, it's the kind of book you read and give away. Right, right. Um, and so I'll probably do that with these again. But <laughs> the um, but I didn't have them, and I thought, you know, I want to, I want to go through them again and and really digest this with our audience here. So I think that um, that's going to be great. You know. Um, Absolutely. Well, I, you know, again, hashtag not a sponsor, but Dr. Fung, I think he does an excellent job of just making the the medical complexity simplified for, for people to understand. I enjoyed the metaphors and the stories that he told within the oh, book yeah. to kind of really help bring it home and to help you understand what, what you really, how your body really works. Absolutely. So I think we should hit that next time. And the last thing I, I really kind of want to share with everybody is uh, Julie did a challenge for us. Ooh. Are you ready for it? Yes, let's hear it. Okay. Now, f- well, but first off, are you in? <laughs> Man, you're making me commit to something I don't know what is yet? Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes, I'm in. You I'm ready in. For, it? For, for the sake of, for, for my sake, for your sake, for the sake of our audience, yes, I am in. All right. Heck yeah. By the way, that is something I can get behind. So, <laughs> starting February 1st, which is Two days from now, right? February first, yes. we are going to eat on the first. We're going to fast on the second. We're going to eat on the third. Eat on the fourth. We're going to fast on the fifth. We're going to fast on the sixth. Uh, we're going to fast on. We're going to eat on the seventh. Fast on the eighth. Eat on the ninth. So it's basically that plan, right? Twenty four, forty eight, seventy two. But here's the other kicker. You ready? Yes. There's only I'm four. Th- only four things you can eat. Four things to eat. So cake, pie, cookies, and cheesecake. Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, come on. That's right. So it's B-B-B-E. That's how we're going to remember it. Ready? So it is beef. Beef, okay. Butter. Butter. Bacon. Bacon. And eggs. Bacon and eggs. Okay. okay. Beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Yeah, let's say it together. Ready to go. Beef. Yep. Beef. Butter, bacon. ah, butter, beef, butter, bacon, bacon and eggs. And okay. eggs. Yeah, yeah, beef, all butter, right. bacon, and eggs. So that's that's all we're eating. Okay, and then um, B B B E, and then we are Julie and I. We have a little mini vacation we're taking on um, February tenth. So we'll be out of town for about four days. We're gonna stay on keto, but probably not gonna fast. I'm gonna take a break from the fasting there, but definitely gonna stay on keto. Maybe try and do OMAD. While we're up there, but okay. not not do the twenty four forty eight seventy two type thing. So, um, but so you're in. Are we doing this I'm together? In. In? We're in. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> All right, everybody's gonna hold it together. So, I think hey, that we, we need to post like a calendar up on the uh, the website too. That would be good too. Yeah, man. Like, yeah. what's wh- what are the fat guys doing? 
Yeah. Heck yeah. What are their fa- what are the what are the fat guys fasting schedules? Yeah, let's do that. Yes. Yeah, we'll put that up there. Cool. Not medical advice. Not medical advice. Absolutely Talk to your not. Yeah. And have a doctor. <laughs> Again, I the yeah. mean, I gotta find a doctor. So um anyhow, yeah. Uh you got anything else, Andy? Uh no, I think I'm good. I uh, yeah, I think that's that's good. Hey, thank you guys for watching this episode. We really do appreciate it. 100%. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Again, smash that like button. It helps us to know that we are doing a good job. Helps get these videos out to more people. Hey, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Later. Later.